In this video, we are going to teach you how to set up and extract information from images using the OpenAI Vision API service. Later, we will show you the accuracy of the output, so please stick around. OpenAI's vision capabilities allow models like GPT-40, GPT-40 Mini, and GPT-4 Turbo to understand images. These models can take in images and answer questions about them. You can provide images either by passing a link or by encoding the image directly in the request. We will show you both methods later in the video. For text extraction, OpenAI Vision uses a technology called Optical Character Recognition, or OCR for short. It analyzes images of text, deciphers the characters, and transforms them into editable digital text. For image recognition and classification, OpenAI Vision uses LLM technology to interpret what it sees in the image you uploaded. There are many ways that you can use this API in order to solve a myriad of problems involving images or documents. For example, you're asking users to upload an image of a document for a specific purpose, such as proof of address or age. When the image is uploaded, you can ask OpenAI Vision what is displayed in the image, what text is included, or what type of document it is. The model will verify if the uploaded document is appropriate and contains the necessary information. Other examples include extracting data from forms and tables in the invoices or receipts, converting handwritten notes, and handling multiple languages in one image. First, we will show you how to set up an OpenAI account and then how to create an API key to access the account from an external application or web page. To create an account, go to platform.openai.com. You will see several links on how to get started, along with the capabilities of the platform. You will also see a quick start section with some sample code and an intro to the models. GPT-4 O and GPT-4 O Mini are shown. There are several others available. To get started, click on sign up, then type in the email address you want to use for this account, along with the password. Click continue. OpenAI will send a verification email to your email address to validate your account. Go to your email account and open the email and then click on the Verify Email Address link. Now, you will need to fill out some information about yourself, such as your name, organization, and birthday. Once you fill out this form, click on Agree. Then go back to the OpenAI tab. It should open to the same overview page. Go to the Playground page to interact with the OpenAI platform online. We will show you how to interact with the platform using Python later in this video. You will need to create an API key to access and interact with this platform in the Python script. Click on the API keys link. Here you will see any API keys you have already created. If this is the first time you are using this, we will also need to verify your phone number. Once your phone number is verified, you can continue. Click on the create new secret key on the upper right. Fill out the form. Name here is optional. If you are planning to create multiple keys for different uses, it's better to fill out a meaningful name here to keep track of them. We only have a default project, so we will keep that one selected. Click on Create Secret Key, then click the Copy button on the next screen and save the key value somewhere. You will need to use this later. Check to Permissions, Read and Write should be selected, and then click Done. Within a few seconds, you should see the new API key on this page. You can also delete keys here. Unless you are using the free introductory version, you will need to add some credit to your account before you can start using the platform. Click on Settings and go to Billing. You will need a credit balance to use this platform. If it says $0, click on the Add to Credit Balance button. It will ask for a credit card or other type of payment. You can also view usage limits here. You are restricted to a set number of tokens per minute. Each model has different limits. You can also create spending limits by setting a monthly budget and an email notification threshold. If you need higher usage limits, you will need to wait to move to the next tier based on this criteria. You can also view pricing here. Each model has a different rates per token value. Tokens are pieces of words. We will be using GPT-40, so my $5 credit balance will allow me to send 1 million tokens before we need to add more credit. Other models are less expensive, as shown here. Now that we have an API key and credit, we will show you how this platform works. You can upload a document in the chat window and ask questions about the image. We are just going to ask it to extract the text and give us the type of document that it is. 
You can ask anything you want and it will give accurate response. You may need to modify your questions based on the response to get more accurate responses. This is related to the topic of prompt engineering or asking the questions in a certain manner or format to get the best answer. We will be creating a new video on prompt engineering soon. It takes a few seconds for the model to send a response. As you can see, a lot of text was extracted and the document type was returned. In this case, it called this a commercial driver's license. The extracted text looks very accurate. Here, it is only returning text that it is confident is correct. Now let's check to see how much this single query cost. Our balance is still 495. The cost here was minimal. Now that the account and API key are created, we will show you how to run the API from an application or website. Also, we will cover the basics on how to connect to OpenAI Vision for API communication, how to prepare and send your image to GPT-4, and details on the output from the API. There are a few prerequisites you will need in order to run this code. We will explain these in detail in the video. We use Python and Jupyter Notebooks in VS Code to demonstrate this. First, we need to set up the Python environment with the necessary packages. We are using Conda to create our environment. Next, we set up our environment to be available as a kernel environment in a Jupyter Notebook. You can find more information on how to set this up in another video. Link is in the description below. This is how you can use a Conda environment to run as a kernel in your notebook. We need to import a few packages. The key one here is the OpenAI package. It is an open source library for accessing OpenAI functionality and communicating with the platform. This is a function that encodes our image to be sent through the API. The image needs to be in base64 encoding in order for the platform to be able to read it. And here is a function to process the response from the API. First, we extract the message content, then do some string manipulation, and finally parse the string through JSON loads function to get a Python dictionary object. Then we extract the file name for the local image, removing the path. We save the response to a JSON file in the data subdirectory. In our example, we will be using a driver's license image named dl1.png. We encode the image, adding a data type and base64 prefix. Then we create an OpenAI object named client Note that if you haven't created an environment variable named OpenAI API key, you can pass the key value here. Here, we are sending the message using the client chat completion create function, passing in the model name, role, content, which includes the question we are asking, and limiting the number of tokens used. Limiting the number of tokens will help control costs, but may hurt the accuracy of the model. Results. This is the driver's license we sent to the API. This is the response we got back from the API. It contains the same information that we saw on the online demo earlier. We can do a side-by-side -side comparison and see that this is very accurate, and it even interprets the abbreviations such as date of birth, DOB, and ISS as issue date. It wasn't able to interpret DD correctly, calling it a barcode. But as far as text extraction, there are no mistakes. Accuracy is 100%. It is even able to group the address information and label the zip code. We will be providing a link to the GitHub repo with this code, and we are including a Python script version of this code to run from the command line. Link can be found in the description below. Here is a demonstration of running this script along with the output. We are also including a script that will use a request.post call to the API, bypassing the need to use the OpenAI package to make this application simpler. And here is the output from the request call. Response is not as useful, showing that the OpenAI library includes additional functionality. Want to learn more about AI and its potential applications? Stay tuned for future videos where we explore the fascinating world of AI. Thanks for watching our video. Comments and suggestions are appreciated. See you next time.